you doing, brother? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm here, man. I'm cool. having a good time. Me too. I think I think we already did so much talking beforehand, you know. Yeah, interview's over. <laughs> Y'all missed it. <laughs> so, uh, you are the drummer for a band called Ugly Mustard, mm -hmm. and now you are a singer-songwriter for yourself. And how's that going? Excellent. It's uh, something that I didn't know I had in me. Uh, I just did it for fun at first. Uh, I got a guitar. Uh, I'd always played a little bit, but I got a new guitar and I just kind of uh, just really took to it and started uh, finding all these melodies that had been floating around in my head and all these lyrics and ideas and concepts and all the stuff that I that I knew I had inside of me, but I didn't know I could articulate it in, in music as much uh, up until uh, you know, I started this whole thing. And all the bands I've been in, I've always been part of the co-writing, uh, but I've you know, never been the primary songwriter. Uh, but I've always, I've always loved melody and uh, you know, I've always been pushing melody in all the bands I've been in. And, um, I, didn't, you know, I didn't realize it was going to flow out of me so hard and good. <laughs> but you're having fun. I'm having a blast. And uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, just, just, just what you're doing as a singer songwriter. How long um, by yourself doing what you're doing. Probably about five years. About five, five years. Five, six years. Yeah, about six years. It's hard to put a starting point because it's kind of a, you know, slide up to it. You know, just do a little piece like that's kind of cool. And then, you know, but as far as like, I wrote my very first song at least all the way through about six years ago. Not just pieces. I had a bunch of pieces before that, but just my first song all the way through. Were you gonna you know? maybe put them together with, uh, with maybe something you're doing with Ugly Musher, or is this something that you were thinking about doing for a while? As both, really? Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah, I actually had a couple of things I wrote that I was gonna present to the band, um, and then I, I wrote a lot of things just for myself and uh, you know uh, my wife and kids that are always my great audience. <laughs> and uh, that was always like just do it for them and the next thing you know more people than my wife and kids liked it and encouraged me and, and, and that kind of thing and then I just really got into it it was just um, it started pouring out of me in droves it was, it was crazy I had that since I was a kid <laughs> well, well let's talk a little bit about Ugly Mustard okay. let's talk about when Ugly Mustard actually began what era was it uh, who did y'all play with at that time um, it was the 90s, uh, you know, Nine Inch Nails was a big influence, uh, Skinny Puppy was a big influence. Uh, we were friends with uh, Pantera growing up and so there was a little Pantera influence in there. And, uh, you know, we started out, uh, you know, uh, Kelly the lead singer, probably Mustard, and Eric, uh, the guitar player, probably Mustard. We were another band before that called Sheer Threat. Actually, been through several versions of that, and moved to LA to get a record deal. Got it, lost it. Got another one, lost it. You know, usual stories. Uh, so that band kind of uh, went through some breakup type things, uh, and Eric started, you know, uh, going off in his own world musically, and he showed it to me, and uh, and he was working in the studio with Mike Dane, the uh, bass player for. Bobby Mustard, and uh, you know who became the bass player for Bobby Mustard, and they were doing a little studio thing, and then he showed they showed me that that, um, that music, and I said, man, let's, no, this is not a, this is not just for fun. Let's do this for real. Um, and so Eric and I went in the closet, as I say, and it was a little small rehearsal room, worked all the music up, and uh, uh, decided to do a show. About nine months later. We made it a real band, not just kind of a fun little project. And uh, you know, that was our first show. We actually we had a little bit of reputation before that, and we had a couple of marketing tricks we did for that. Um, and so we had a pretty packed house the first show. It was awesome. a cool, cool way to start. And uh, shortly after that, we got record company interest, and the songwriting was great. Um, as we'll talk about, it's more songwriting is everything, no matter what style of band. You're and uh, Ugly Mustard had really good songwriting. And so, 
the uh, got record company interest, and we signed with an independent label. That was the uh, management company for Stevie Nicks. Cool. And uh, went on tour, and uh, you know things started happening. We were on every radio station for a while in the country, which is cool. I thought I, I thought I'd made it. I thought I'd like okay, I got to the hardest part. I've been trying my whole life to get to. And, uh, long story, but uh, you know things kind of went downhill from there. Business-wise, <laughs> and so uh, a couple years later, we all started having kids and having our lives, and uh, just uh, you know, just started doing some other things. So. Well, and your son's in music. Yes, he is. Been in music all his life. All his life, ever since he was a year old. Want to do a little <laughs> shout out about what band he plays? Yeah, welcome to Wednesday. Uh, the best new upcoming band in Dallas, in my opinion. Uh, of course, I'm a little biased. <laughs> they are phenomenal. Yeah, uh, my son's the lead singer and uh, the main songwriter for the band. Um, been preaching to him his whole life that you know, if you want to be a musician, songwriting is everything. There's your fallback, you know, and it helps your career and it's your great fallback, you know. And luckily, he was born with that talent. I think he's a good songwriter. Yes, he's very good. Thank you very much. He gets it from you. I mean, well, he gets it from several right. sources. You know, he's been around. He's been around all of us forever. He's been around, you know, Ugly Mustard and all all the fringe players and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but your songwriting's phenomenal. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate that. We dig the shit out of it. Well, thank you awesome. so much. I can't tell you how much that means to me. I appreciate it. Um, so what else do you want to do with? This, I don't know what to call you. Do you want me to call you just Fred Rush? Do you want me to call you the band Fred? Do you want me to... Uh, uh, well, Fred Rush is fine now, but uh, we're kind of calling the project uh, informally right now Fred. Okay. Um, there's a great story behind that. I don't know if you want to hear it. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. Uh, <clears throat> one of the merchandising things that uh, Ugly Mustard did was these work shirts like Mechanics Wear. It's kind of big in the late 90s. Though. Band sold those things, yeah. um, and so when they they didn't tell me anything about it, and so uh, the guy who was doing merchandising was also working with Welcome Wednesday and me as well, a good friend of mine, Jim Brandsetter. He he came up and showed me. and said, "Hey man, sick our new merchandise idea. And it was these work shirts, and it had my name on it, Fred. And, uh, and I thought, wow, you know, that's cool. You have got one for each one of us, you know." Come here and look at. They went to the merchandise booth, and every single one of them had Fred on it. So they were known as the Fred shirts. And the reason it was a little funny for everybody is because I've always been, you know, I always thought that was kind of a goofy name, Fred, growing up with, because it has, some, you know, it, you know, kind of goofy connotations to it. But uh, so they, they knew that, that that I thought that way. So they they thought it was funny. It was a great kind of practical joke. And then the, the church took off. So they kind of. You know, they, were, they became on its own entity as Fred Shirt. So uh, when I went to do this project, a lot of people said, man, you should just call it Fred. And, uh, it's a good name. That's a good strong name. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, I like, isn't it Bedford? Uh, Flintstones? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> there you go. Let's see, now you know why, what I'm talking about with the, with the name Fred, you know, Fred Flintstone. Of course, Scooby Doo is the uh, exception to that. Fred was the head, you know, the most smart leader, and he was named Fred. So yeah. that was the exception to what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's an awesome name. I think it's a very powerful name. I mean, it's very simple. It's easy to remember. It's kind of like Welcome to Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Got a rose brought up. Fred, it's there. It's, it sticks. It's like, okay, here's Fred Rush. They're playing. Boom. Who are we? We're Fred. Well, cool. I think you very like simple. it. It's kind of a trial basis right now to see how everybody feels about it. So I appreciate your input. You know? Everybody, a lot of people, when they saw that Fred was playing, they knew it was me. So I thought that was a good sign as well, too. So. See how that goes. <laughs> um, yeah, and you, we saw you all at the Curtain Club, um, and you brought who did you bring on stage with you? You brought some partners or some friends. I did. Um, you know, this is a, a little bit of a, you know, my approach to this whole thing, at least at the beginning of it, well, maybe forever on it, is uh, I really like it to be kind of a Fred Rush and fam family and friends type atmosphere of the shows. Um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have a lot of great musicians and great people, more importantly, involved in my life musically. Uh, and you know, they all express interest to be involved a little bit in some way. So, um, you know, my very first show, I, 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 you know, I brought two of, two of my best friends up, up to play.
play uh, Eric from Ugly Mustard uh, play uh, one of the songs. Uh, and he actually is playing some of the guitar parts on the record too. Same song, uh, Insomnia. And I had uh, my best friend, uh, brother I never had, and, uh, that I met my first day in college, uh, co-write a song with me, in Mary Gold Lane. And so it, it was just it was a no-brainer to ask him to sit in and play guitar on that as well too. So uh, that was a great great feeling for me to have those guys sit in on the first show and just kind of be part of my debut and in front of my peers. And then you had your son come up and yep. sing a song with and you. That, and it was, it, that was great, but the best part was, uh, and, you know, and the audience reacted really well. It was really neat. Uh, Trent came up there and uh, said we were opening up for Welcome to Wednesday, which was another thing that was like a dream come true, opening up for my son's band. You know, debut, and he came out in the uh, middle of the song, kind of exciting part of the song, and he came out. And, you know, it's it kind of it was theatrical and cool. You know, well, that <laughs> really, awesome. really, really enjoyed that part. That was my favorite night, part of the night, actually. Oh yeah, father and son. Absolutely, man. Badass. You know, <laughs> it was great. It was great. I, I actually videotaped that. So. Oh, I, I, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. It was awesome. It's phenomenal. Uh, That's cool. Opened up with my set with like asking uh, Jeff McDowell, who's uh, you know again I'm blessed to have a great player, a great partner in this whole deal. He's he's, he's been a drummer in, in the Fred Project, and uh, I, I opened up asking him. I go, Jeff, is this heaven? And uh, he said, No, but it's the Curtain Club. You're opening up for your son's band. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's kind of pretty much how I felt the whole night, and it was, it was a great vibe. It was, and, and, and it just brings me to another point, that's why I, I wanted you to come here and do a profile interview, is that you give back to the music community, bringing musicians up that you've worked with, or new musicians, it, it, it's just taking care of the local music scene, I mean, it's, it's an alliance. No, I fantastic. totally agree, and you, you, you and I have talked about this several times, and uh, I, uh, you know, I come from a background of that all my best friends were musicians in other bands. And, you know, we just were supporting each other. And it, wasn't a it wasn't a competitive. It was only competitive in a fun way. You know, like trying to do better than each other, but not like in a malicious way of trying to, you know, uh, stamp the other band out or beat the other band. You know. Like the Warriors yeah. have a game fight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was, we support each other and we'd go to each show. And, you know, it was important. We didn't stand in the back and our, you know, arms crossed and moving like this. We, you know, we were up there front, you know, just banging heads. Yeah, and, like, yeah. and then we'd sit in with each other and, you know, it was great. And, um, you know, we talked, you know, something about Pantera back when we played clubs. We were playing the same clubs with them. And Eric and, and Daryl were, like, really good friends. They both grew up in Grand Prairie. And so we, you know, we'd go to all of their shows and they'd come to ours. And, and uh, you know, again, they, they, they we, we, we all sat in and went to the front of the stage and just raised hell with everybody. It was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And see, that's what, I'm old school too. I believe, and, and uh, when you go to support local music, you go to support local music. You bring each other up. So if one of your friends is in a band that does make it nationally, nationally, yep. like, you have something to do sure. with that to pull them Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's, it's not a competition. It's not like a Super Bowl and only one band can exist at the end. There's, I mean, virtually unlimited bands could make it and do well. And it's just, it also just makes it more fun. You know, I'm definitely not trying to be a cool guy. I never have been. I always like to just, just kind of have fun and, and be supportive. And, and, you know, that That's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I like to see some of the younger bands catch on, and I'm starting to see that a little bit too. I think the young bands are starting to friend, you know, befriend each other and. And start to support each other, and they're realizing it's not a Super Bowl you know, This is all, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's everybody can exist in this whole environment, and you know, with, with the Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and the whole social media thing, we're starting to figure out, boy, if, you know, if one band supports me, and another, and it keeps going instead of kind of it's a snowball. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and uh, you know, I'm starting to see that a lot more. I think social media is of all the things that everybody say bad about it. I think that's an amazing thing about it. I think that's what well, that's the good thing about the social media, mm -hmm. it is bringing people together musically, bringing, bringing all that together, and bringing the fans closer to the bands that are doing this. The bad thing about social media is they won't get off the damn chairs or the couch to go out yeah. and enjoy the music. 
And that's what we're trying to do as DFW Undercover, is letting people and promoting people like you and your son to get people out and say, okay, there's a lot of creation, there's a lot of local music, you need to get out there and enjoy it. Screw, yeah, I agree. Screw the, the uh, football game, DVR that sucker. Yeah. Man. Go out there because you may miss something that will be phenomenal. Exactly. Well, again, the social media has a great way of like, hey, you missed something, you know, and you should come and see it. So there's a lot of discussions about bands going on. So that, I think that kind of helps it as well. Yeah. You know, and, you know, you're right. I mean, there's, you know, people who just watch something on YouTube, but at least on Twitter and, 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 and Instagram and, and, and Facebook, you know, and Instagram has the pictures and they're discussing, like, you missed this. You know, I can post this live, but boy, you should have seen it snowed at the Welcome to Wednesday show. No band's done that in the Curtain Club, man. That's so cool, you know. Awesome. You know, and, and you could show a picture of it, which makes people want to go. They don't want, I mean, that's nothing. But go and see it there. Yeah. You know, have snow fall on you while you're watching them. At a, at a rock show in the middle of July was, you know, there's no, there's no replacing that. You know, that's no. cool. <laughs> and you missed it because you're on the couch. Exactly. Not getting to enjoy exactly. that phenomenal just creation, not just the music, the vibe, but the artistry that was behind it. Yeah, I agree. So that's that's what we're working on, and we'll get there. Yeah, no, I, we'll I, I believe in what you guys are doing more than I can possibly explain. You know? So you like DFW? I yeah. do love DFW. I like I like all you guys. I'm, I mean, your whole spirit and what you're trying to do really attracted me, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been you're saying a lot of the same things that I've been saying, to, you know, to my son and, and, and his band and, and you know my friends and that kind of thing. So to hear you say is a lot of the same things. You know that, I, that I've been preaching, you know, because I'm an old school kind of guy too. Uh, you know, that's why you and I really hit it off as soon as we had it. Well, we got to bring the passion back into this exactly. creation, this, this music, this artistry, all these musicians. We, we've got fantastic musicians in Dallas, and I know everybody talks about Austin, and that's phenomenal. They have them. That we're not in Austin. We are in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Yep. There is phenomenal, phenomenal musicians here. They're fantastic. There always there. has been. I know, and it, it's great, and it it, it, it it started before Pantera, and it's still there after sure. Pantera, and and these bands just need to be seen, they need to be promoted, you need to stop worrying about the Austins and the Houstons and all this. If you're here, enjoy it here. Do it now. Yeah. Now, the See platform has expanded again. I, I believe, uh, you know, and I've talked to, you know, I have some friends, you know, club owners down in uh, Deep Ellum, and, uh, Especially with Whit and Doug from the Curtain Club, and uh, shout out to the Curtain Club, best venue down there. Love, love those guys. Um, you know, same discussions with them, and they're, you know, they're they're starting to see this kind of excitement again down there. You know, it's about it's like a, a you know an incubation for young bands again. I'm start, they're starting to see it. I'm starting to see it. You know, you're starting to see it. Everybody's starting to see it. I really think this we're about to have that big resurgence down there. We're starting, everybody's starting to feel it again. And the momentum's picking up, and, I, and, I, and you know, people like DFW, DFW Undercover is contributing to that, and it's important, you know. Well, yeah, I, I, to hope, me anyway. <laughs> I, I hope. I hope that we have a big part. We, we've Absolutely. heard a lot of people, even when we're not at the Kirk Club, actually talking about us. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we want. But we want not just them talking about us. We want them to talk about the passion that we have for getting this together, the alliance of bringing the music community back to a strong point yep. and getting the bands, not looking at this as a competition, getting the bands and the fans, their fans of their bands right. in the door to see a band that they're there to to help, to right. be there for, to be a fan base for. Well, I mean, and it'll happen. In, in, in the old days, you know, the old days. <laughs> um, it was a night. It wasn't just a band. And I'm starting to see this a little bit more, but uh, this is one thing that I've talked to, you know, again, Whit and Doug and Kurt Club and, and Trent's band and some of my friends as well, musicians, that it used to be where you would go to the Curtain Club and you, would, and you wouldn't even know it was going to play, but you know it was going to be great. It was going to be like, oh man, they have a reputation, they have great bands. You know, we're going to see some good bands. Or you did know the band was playing, and you got there early to see the bands opening up because you knew that they you know, had good bands, and this is the time to go down there. And what I saw happen for a while is 
everybody that would become a fan of their band, and then they would go see that band, they would get there right before they would start, and then leave right when they're done. And I think that contributed some of the slot things and, you know, you know these approaches that, that kind of squelched the local music scene as well. Everybody just went for their band. Now I'm starting to see a little bit more effort of them coming early and staying late to see the group of bands. And I think the clubs are starting to put, starting to get really good at putting bands like bands together. So if you're going to go see a singer-songwriter, they're not going to be grouped with a heavy metal band, you know, just because they're trying to fill a time spot and they bring fans in. They're trying to make more of a theme night of singer-songwriters. That way people are encouraged to come early and stay late. As opposed to heavy metal, alt-rock, singer-songwriter, you DJ, you know, that kind of stuff, and everybody comes in and, and that, for their slot. And I think that's another important thing that's going on is to have these theme type bands. Yeah, the only thing, the only time that you need to do all kinds of all genres of festival. Right, right. I mean, that's perfect for well, that. Yeah, but we'll get everybody's going to come awesome. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody's going to want to see everybody. There's mm -hmm. fans, there's different genre fans, and everybody gets to see everybody. That's yeah. what a festival is for. Absolutely, yeah. But Kirk Club, we love Kirk Club. Yeah. We love we love what they do. We love the sound. We love the stage. We we just liquid lounge, Kurt clubs. That's an awesome thing. That's because it's run by great down to earth. Yeah, they are awesome. And uh, let's get back to Fred. Let's talk about some of your music. Okay. Um, one of my favorite songs from you is uh, Ordinary City. Let's let's talk about what brought that song. Why you write? Why did you write about this? Song? What does it mean? Well, uh, you know, as a songwriter, you know, I base things on, that I've seen, either I'm going through or I see somebody else go through. And, you know, that song is about when you try to go outside of yourself, you're not as powerful. And then when you go back to being yourself, and you go back to home base, whether it be a location or just who you are or a group of people that you are home with, then you become yourself and super, you become a superman like. And so it's about being lost, you know, or burnt out, or just being burnt out, or just going through all these things that you're not being yourself, or you're not spending enough time, in, you know, with family, and you're working too much, or you're on the road, you know, it's always more respect of being on the road since I've been on the road as a musician. But it's about being away from home, and again, not just location, but just by who you're, who you're, you're supposed to be with. And, um, and then when you are with, you know, with the people you're supposed to be with, with your loved ones, with your family, with your, your home, you become yourself, which means you become a Superman. And so that's the, the whole idea of ordinary Superman. When I'm ordinary, when, you're, when somebody's ordinary and means that they're exactly doing who they're supposed to be, they're Superman. Cool. Um, and I like the title because you know it's like jumbo shrimp, ordinary Superman, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, you know that's what it, that's what it's about. It's about letting things go. Um, it's it's about being happy with what you have. You know? awesome. The first lines of each verse are really kind of describe what that song is about. So. And that's what you're playing for us today. Right? Yes. Awesome. Request by DFW Undercover to play ordinary Superman. Let's get to it. <laughs> I'd like to send this out to my dad. He was my ordinary Superman growing up.
and feel like nothing can stop me. Watch me be just like Superman. I'm young, yeah, wise. Nothing gets wasted in the eyes. Show, I promise you that. <laughs> We're looking forward to it, and 
Man, I really appreciate it, brother, on this interview. Thank you very much. Oh, man. My pleasure. I really enjoyed getting to know you and look forward to a lot of things together. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>